Hey developers, today we're going to talk about learning. Why you should always keep learning as a developer. Let's talk about it. So the other day I saw this blog article from Dennis Naresh and he has this concept called expert beginners. So I thought I would go ahead and talk a little bit about this and about how you should be approaching learning as a web developer or software developer nowadays. Now this can go for new beginners or developers who have years of experience because I really think that as this profession being in a developer position that you really need to constantly learn. Now that doesn't mean that you're going to be jumping from framework to framework from library to library every six months. What that means is that you really should understand the fundamental principles of the technologies that you're using that can actually be applied to many different frameworks, many different languages. And I really like this idea of this expert beginner, and that is something you, you don't wanna be, and I'll explain that in a second. So this blog right here is Dennis Naresh's uh, Medium blog article. He talks about active learning, how developers keep learning. He actually did a talk at Geek Time Developers Conference and you can see the, I'll put this link in the notes below. It's also one of the reasons um, why I put Udemy links in all my videos, not just because I do make a couple bucks affiliate, because I really believe that everyone should keep learning. And those are resources that I think that will help you out. So let me explain this active learner. I'm not gonna be as eloquent as the talk that that uh, that Dennis did, but if you want to, like I said, the link will be in the description below and you can watch it and read the article. So let's take a look here. I'm gonna go ahead and full screen it. So active learner, how developers keep learning. These are from the slides from the actual talk. So in this talk he was talking about, he interviewed over 300 different candidates and a lot of them were very, very good candidates, but he had one problem most of them didn't pass the interview process. And you'll find this in pretty much every place that does interviews, you get a lot of CVs, a lot of resumes, and there's not a whole lot of people that are qualified enough to be in the job. But one of the reasons he describes why that happens is because they are what he calls, well, expert beginners. So they are they they know a technology they use it every day but they can't explain how it works so they may be like let's say they're a react expert they could probably tell you all the fundamentals of react how to create a project they may have even created quite a few projects but if you ask them to dig a little deeper into what some of the concepts mean they won't know what they are they know the pros of the languages or frameworks but they don't know the cons of it they know how to solve the problem, uh, but they think that's the only solution. So they can't really give you a balanced view of the pros and cons of things. They can't give you a balanced view of what's underneath those layers. And uh, they need they need a lot more help that way. So you kind of have the analogy of here of a fish in a glass bowl here. They can see out, you know, they know their environment really well, but they don't know much beyond that and he coins this term expert beginners. So on the other hand, the other type of developer he really tries to hire for is something called the wolf. And the wolf solves all kind of problems. So they really have a more in-depth knowledge of the frameworks and the languages that they use. They can tell you the pros and cons of it. They've uh, done a lot more research on what it is, they have a more breadth of background behind them. And the difference he calls between it is the expert beginner relies only on passive learning and takes things for granted. So you might hear the term magic box or it just works like that or I don't really know how that works but it just does it. And they don't really look to see how the underlying technology works. And this can be kind of dangerous for some positions because you really want someone to be able to troubleshoot problems. It's like uh, if you're using a library or framework, um, it might be a good idea to go look at their GitHub profile and look at the issues opened. 
because you may want to see what kind of problems are happening in the framework. What are the underlying issues that are people are happening, having? How long has this library been in use for? What's the adoption rate of it? It's sometimes it's dangerous to just take a library and just put it into your into your project. So you really want to do. You want to be more thoughtful of what you're doing. And then he calls this wolf the active learner. And of course, that's Dennis. That's a free plug for him and his website. He's obviously created this, these slide decks. So he talks about how one requires new skills, uh, how expert beginners are born, what and who is an active learner, and tools for active learners. So how does one acquire new skills? And he has this graph where you kind of start off as a novice. What many of you might be watching this video are new to programming and development you probably be considered a novice, but sooner or later you'll be starting to use enough of these technologies that you'll probably be considered an advanced beginner. Maybe you have one or two years of experience. You've maybe actually got hired at some web development agency, but you're starting to put in the pieces together, you're starting to put together projects. But then there's a leap to competent, but a lot of people may actually go down to the expert beginner route, and that's where they think they understand everything. You can give them a project and they might do a good job of it. They might go in and they'll they'll put all the puzzle pieces together and at the end of the day you're going to have a fully functional web app but they really don't understand the fundamentals of how that app works they don't really understand why you would use one piece of the app versus another piece why you would use one tool and not another tool and they simply don't know what they don't know because they haven't kind of had that active learner mindset to them they think that they are the kings of the world and yeah, these people are confident and that is one trait that they have, but maybe they're not seeing the big picture behind it. So why? So we live in an industry that is constantly changing. There's new frameworks, languages, libraries coming out all the time. And it feels like we're kind of in a rat race. A lot of times in this industry, we're always trying to, to learn more and you can kind of get in the habit of of not learning anything deeply and then just kind of switching between these new technologies all the time and i've always said that you know i'm a big fan of Vue.js. i'm a big fan of Ember.js. and some people have criticized me saying that Vue is view is just a knockoff of this language or this framework or this library and i don't learn what i want to when i learn frameworks libraries i want to learn you know deeply what they're doing i want to compare and contrast them between them and other frameworks and why i would use one and not the other so i don't act like i'm just trying to jump between one and another i'm trying to learn and to use those principles and concepts in my everyday job and learn what the best tool is for the best situation but that's really hard to do when things are changing so quickly and he goes on to this analogy that full stack does not equal expert um, there are definitely some full stack developers that are experts, but he kind of defines it as someone that um, that they, they calls it kind of in this funny comic here, the full back end developer. 100%, I'm 100% full stack. I've been doing back end for 10 years, and yesterday I managed to vertically center a div in CSS. So he's talking about these people that claim to be full stack because they maybe did some tutorials online and now they can create a front end and back end, but that doesn't necessarily make them an expert um, in any stretch of the imagination. And of course, one of the part of the problem is, especially if you're in a team that uses the same sort of frameworks, the same libraries, does it the same way every day in and out, you're really in your comfort zone after a while and you're not going to see those other problems. You're not gonna see those other things that are happening out there, which can be a disadvantage for you. So I've heard this expression before that if you have these type of developers, they might have 10 years of experience, but it's really the same experience 10 times. So they might be uh, learning the same, doing the same things, fixing the same bugs on the same code base for 10 years. And that, uh, it, it makes for a very comfortable job, but it doesn't really grow you. And one of the ways you can grow yourself and to learn more and to stretch yourself is to obviously to get out of your comfort zone and try things you haven't done before. And this definitely is going to hurt you in interviews and things like that. And then, of course, passive learning, where things just kind of happen. You don't know exactly what's happening. You're copying and pasting code, uh, cargo cult programming, 
and you just don't know what's happening and you might even blame other teams like other teams responsible for this i don't understand this and people like this sometimes have the tendency to say well x sucks y sucks react sucks uh view is the best or view sucks react is the best it just is i mean obviously that's just there's there's that's the narrow side of way of thinking and I love these these pictures of icebergs. I mean, it kind of really explains what I'm trying to talk about here. We have these active learners that they don't necessarily, they're not necessarily experts, but they're really trying to dig deep and they understand a little bit more of the, inter in, the internals and they're trying to learn from a holistic point of view rather than just kind of that top level layer that these expert beginners get to. So how can you become an active learner? Well, everyone can. It's definitely more of a mindset than anything else. So there's four things that he mentions to become more of this active learner. Read, so the more you know. Uh, so a couple things. He, he uh, well, We can use things like Feedly to get a, there's a bunch of different websites and blogs that can be all put in one place. You can easily check them all. There's definitely podcasts, videos. There's ways of saving stuff on your phone, and that's always a good idea. Number two, leave your comfort zone. So if you're in the same job and doing the same thing every day, don't expect different results. So maybe trying to either outside of work or maybe try to change jobs so that way you can try to learn more. And don't be afraid. People think it's bad to learn these new frameworks or technologies, but I, I, I disagree. If you, if you are just learning the surface level of each one of these frameworks and that's it, and you just keep constantly switching from one to the next to the next, you're never really understanding the fundamentals, that's bad. But I think it's good when these new frameworks and technologies come out to look at them, try to dig deep in, see if you can see some principles and ideas that maybe be used that you may have saw at other frameworks and try to try to get a deeper understanding of how that all works. But I have, I definitely agree. You should look at these other things. And then, of course, when you're learning, discover new methods, discover some same principles, do it yourself. React. Uh, number three, share your knowledge. So, really good idea is to always be writing about it. You can do videos like I do where I teach you different concepts that I've learned or different ideas I have. I also have a blog, which if you want to look at it, it's programwitheric.com. But the best way, one of the best ways to learn things and definitely retain it is to teach it to someone else. And it's hard to be, yeah, especially if you're writing a blog article, other people are going to read it. It's hard to, to just write garbage. I mean, it's easy to write garbage, but you should be able to make more impact and and explain your your thoughts better if you write them down or explain to someone else so definitely sharing with other people is a good way of learning and the last one after school activities i go to a few meetups in my town you can meet like-minded people you can learn new concepts you probably wouldn't learn in your day-to-day -day job which is awesome you can also contribute to open source projects i've contributed to a few i just don't have enough time to do it a lot and of course, you got to be constantly coding and coding outside your work, trying to run your own projects. If you're not, if you have an entrepreneurial background, maybe just try to create that startup. And one more thing, of course, if you do those four things to become an active learner, is it really enough? No. You just don't. Uh, if you don't know where you're going, any road can take you there. So be specific on what your goals are. So set goals, make plans, get to work, stick with it, reach to it. You might want to look at some productivity, try to do the same thing every day at the same time. Um, so if you're trying to learn a new framework, you may want to spend every day at the same time learning that new framework. And you want to set a goal of what, why are you trying to accomplish this? Are you trying to get a new job or are you just trying to, are you trying, you, did you notice that you're, you're this expert beginner? So you want to become better. So just keep those ideas in mind. Eat, sleep, learn, repeat. Takeaway points, it's your mindset, your project, read, share your knowledge, leave your comfort zone, after school activities, and repeat. Eventually become the wolf. All right, so that's, that is just a quick idea of how to become an active learner. You know, in my day job, my life, I definitely try to keep these in mind. I always try to improve on what I'm doing. I'm always trying to learn. 
Uh, I think those are very important principles for a web developer. If you like these type of videos, click that subscribe button. That really helps me. And click that little bell button. I can tell you when next time I upload a video. Thanks and have a great day.